Hello, I'm Data, and today I have for you a smaller video on unstackable item sorters that showcases a new NAUless liquid sorter, as well as some updates to the flint and steel shears and boat sorter I showed last video. This video, in combination with the previous unstackables item sorter video, should cover all NAUless unstackable sorters as of 1.16.2. Also, I just got a new microphone and I haven't had time to properly set it up quite just yet, so I apologize if the audio feels a little bit wonky. Hopefully it'll be fixed by the next video. Let's get through the updated sorters fairly quickly. In front of me is essentially just a lighter and shear sorter, squished together with a boat sorter. And it works just as you would expect. So flint and steel and shears, they can't be ejected by a dispenser, so they'll pass straight down through this left hopper here. Random unstackables, including water, will be ejected by the dispenser, dispenser and be picked up by this middle hopper in middle hopper here. And then boats will be placed half a block above the water, and boats are a little bit more than half a block tall. So they'll just barely clip into the lava here, and the lava will break the boat, and it'll be picked up by this hopper and be put into the rightmost barrel. And I can just show you this working. This here is our assortment of items. And I can just load it right into here. There you go. So that's what I mean by the boats just barely clip into the lava. And as we can see, we are picking up all the boats. Here we have our flint, steel, and shears. Here we have our random unstackables. And for the remainder of the video, totems of undying will uh, represent random unstackables. And here are our boats. Some people also ask me if this clock here can be used as a water bucket filler. And yes, it can. The water will reform in five game ticks, which is faster than hopper speed. So uh, obviously a hopper speed clock or water reforming can keep up with a hopper speed clock. And I can just demonstrate this working. So here we have empty buckets in this chest. And I'll just drop it in here. As you can see, the water is reforming on every single uh, bucket. And we're getting water buckets here. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So every single bucket became a water bucket. Next up is a lighter from shear sorter. This is a one wide design that uses a lit campfire to detect whether or not the item was flint and steel or whether or not the item was uh, shears. Now it is running at two fifths hopper speed, so it's significantly slower than my previous design. However, this was constructed primarily for people who had some concerns about uh, building this, this sorter in the vicinity of climbable blocks, and the lit campfire entirely circumvents that issue. So let's just see it working. And uh, inside this chest is just, as you'd expect, shears and flint and steel. If I put it running through here, as you can see, it's really, really slow. And uh, it's primarily really slow because of how I have set up this reset mechanism. And I wanted this reset mechanism to be uh, fairly simple. But it does work. So we're getting shears up at the top here. And we're getting flint and steel with uh, minus one durability at the bottom. It is also absolutely imperative that you use a sloped rail here. Otherwise, this design would be directional. And the reason why it won't be directional is that sloped rails send out an extra ring of block updates above them, and that will ensure that the update order for this instant dropper uh, will always be correct, regardless of the direction. And uh, I can just prove to you that my statement is true. So as you can see, this design is working as intended. We're getting shears on the top barrel and flint and steel in the bottom barrel. And on that note of sloped rails, my previous two wide design that was directional can be made non-directional just by replacing this rail with a sloped rail. And uh, I can just show you working. There we go. So this here operates at two thirds hopper speed, so it's significantly faster than uh, the lit campfire designs in the back there. But as you can see, we get shears at the top and flint and steel at the bottom. And I guess I can also just show you this not working. So this is what it would look like if the update order is wrong. Basically, all the items will just land in this top barrel here, because this dispenser never actually gets triggered. All right, and right here is just a one wide design of this two wide design here. You can probably compact the clock a bit, but I 
I don't really think it's all that necessary. And uh, obviously, again, you ha should use a sloped rail here just to ensure that um, the design is non-directional. And I can just show you this working. There you go. So flint and steel and shears up at the top here. And flint, or sorry, shears at the top. I can't click this barrel. Shears at the top, and then flint and steel at the bottom. And now on to the liquid sorters. In 1.12, there were two ways, as far as I remember, to reliably determine whether a bucket contained lava or water. One is the flow length, which is really slow and impractical because lava takes a really, really long time to flow, um, flow, for, flow for four blocks. And two is whether or not an entity burns. So obviously, if an entity is in lava, it'll burn. If an entity is in water, it won't burn. However, this ended up being fairly bulky. However, since 1.13, there are two new ways to detect lava from water. So one of those ways is through the formation of bubble columns. So water on soul sand or magma block will form, will form a bubble column, and we can detect that. Well, obviously, lava does not form a bubble column, so that would be a way to distinguish between the two. However, this suffers from the same problem as flow length in that it's really slow. So it takes a whole second to form the bubble column, which means that the absolute maximum you could get with this concept is two-fifths hopper speed. However, there is a second option, and in my opinion is the ideal option, which is a waterloggable block. So in this case, a slab, or any other waterloggable water block for that matter, will create different behavior between a water bucket and a lava bucket due to the fact that there is no lava logging. And we can use the, that difference in behavior to distinguish between a water bucket and a lava bucket. And in front of me, this device does exactly that. In terms of redstone, we just have an eight game tick clock over on the left side here, which will send two pulses to the dispenser via a piston. And while this dispenser is firing, we lock the hopper underneath so that the, dis so that the dispenser is able to shoot out a water bucket or shoot out the liquid uh, from the bucket and pull the liquid back into the bucket before sending it, sending it over. We then repeat this same process, except we use a waterloggable block to distinguish between the water bucket and the lava bucket. So this first part here distinguishes between miscellaneous items and liquid items. And then this bottom part here is the one that determines between the water bucket and the lava bucket. And I can just show you it working here. So here we have milk as our random unstackable. So I guess I lied at the beginning of the video when I said totems would be our random unstackable. Sorry about that. And we have nine water buckets and nine lava buckets. There we go. So as you can see, it gets uh, double pulsed really quickly. So we get water and it doesn't even have time to flow over to destroy the rail. And as you can see, we have nine lava buckets here, nine water buckets here, and nine milk buckets over here. Given that this is a 1.13 and above sorter, I also thought to consider that people might not want to kill their fish that they can collect in 1.13 and up. So I made a one wide tileable fish preserving bucket sorter. Now there are only two major changes here. One, we have to sort the water buckets first, otherwise a lava buckets might end up burning burning the dispensed fish. And two, we use an upside down stair here for our water loggable block. Since fish, when they spawn, will clip inside of the collision box of this stair, the dispenser will actually spawn the fish one block above in this water chamber right here. And that allows us to preserve the fish from any lava or any other kind of damage and allows the player to pick up the fish uh, later on. And one, I can show you that it does work as a regular bucket sorter. So again, we're using the regular water buckets. So we're gonna get lava down here and get milk buckets over here. And we'll get water buckets all the way down here. And it takes a little while for the water buckets to travel all the way down because I couldn't find a really nice way to uh, route the water buckets, um, water buckets from this point uh, to the bottom. And there's a little bit of tile entity spam, but if you have an idea of how to get rid of these tile entities, then please let me know. 
And now I'll show you what I mean by fish preserving. So here we have buckets of tropical fish instead of water buckets. Okay. And as you can see, the tropical fish will just be spawned above the stair block in this water chamber here. And at this point, y it's really up to you on what you want to do with these fish. So one, you could just manually come in with a water bucket and pick up these fish. Uh, the other option is you could pick them up with a minecart and send them off to another location. Or you could even just hook up this chamber with some water straight into an aquarium or wherever, wherever else you're storing your fish so that you can uh, recollect your fish later. And uh, I'll just show you that it worked. So now we have an extra nine milk buckets at the bottom, extra nine lava buckets at the bottom, and an extra nine water buckets at the bottom. And this is also hopper speed. Now, if your heart doesn't particularly care for fish, but your heart does care for one wide tileability, I also made a one wide, one wide tileable, uh, just a standard uh, bucket sorter. And I, it looks like I got rid of my chest, so let me go grab that. And uh, I can just show you this working. So it works in the exact same way as the two wide tileable version. Here I'm using a dead coral fan as my water loggable block, but it absolutely does not matter what your water loggable block here uh, is in this case. Um, while in the two wide tileable design, it requires that your water loggable block have a solid top surface. And I can just show you. So we have milk buckets here, water buckets here, and lava buckets here. Now, just so that you're aware, if you do put fish buckets in, or buckets of fish into this one, here, the fish will sp be spawned onto this block and will either die through asphyxi asphyxiation or they'll be burned by incoming lava. So you'll end up with having uh, fish drops uh, in this barrel here, or in this miscellaneous item stream. Anyhow, that's it for this video. These designs should work at any interval of input, so they're really robust, so please let me know if, if they break. As always, the world download is available in my Discord, which is linked in the description. I promise Dynamic Bulk will be published soon, and I hope to see you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.